Welcome to Lawyers in the House with Motley. Wish you had a lawyer in the family? Now you do. Here's your host, Veronica Waters. Welcome to the house. This is Lawyers in the House with Motley on WSB. I'm your host, Veronica Waters. If there is one thing that makes me cry happy tears, it is when I open up my Instagram and see a video of a kid being surprised with a new puppy. I absolutely love it. I've seen these videos, and clearly my algorithms have figured out that this is the kind of stuff I love because it pops up on YouTube and it comes up on on the reels on IG and um, in adults too, surprising. It's, it's wonderful and always makes me feel so warm and fuzzy and, you know, I get all a little misty. But um, we know that dog ownership is not all puppy kisses and kibble. You know, it's um, in addition to the chores of pooper, pooper scooping, poop scooping. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are things that come along with dog ownership that are a lot more serious. Um, you know, it's sort of the other side of unconditional love and how we treat our animals has a lot to do with how they treat the world around them. So dog ownership is the topic of the day on Lawyers in the House today. And I'm with two fabulous attorneys from Motley Injury Attorneys. First of all, my friend, Michael Rubin. Michael, we have to keep meeting like this. Yes, of course. It's so much fun. <laughs> Michael, never give up Rubin, who has been with Motley for well over 20 years now. And um, after attending law school in Boston, he came our way. Is that right? Yes, that's yeah. correct. All right. Michael's known as a fighter in the courtroom and a guy who's very compassionate with his clients. His clients Thank you. Talk about the big heart that he has. And maybe it's that big heart that makes him such a, a brawler in the courtroom. <laughs> Member of the Million Dollar Advocates Club, which you only are invited to when you are consistently bringing home those seven-figure wins for your client. So, Michael, thanks so much for being back with us again oh, in the house. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. <laughs> and another return guest, Sarah Neeland, is back with us on the show. Sarah, as you well may remember from our previous episode, loves to help people. She's got a halo when she walks around the world. It's like it seems to drive her more than anything. And she loves helping her clients navigate the complexities of the law and helping them through these really tough times. I'm so happy to have you back here, Sarah. Thank you so much. I don't know about the halo, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I see a little glow. It could be the lighting. Not sure. I know. You, look, you absolutely do look radiant. I, I did want to talk to you a little bit about what really drives you, though, because you could love to help people and, and do it in any number of ways. I mean, I, I think doing what we do, we're talking to people all day, every day. And it really um, it's so hands on. So um, just being able to make a difference and um, actually seeing the results, um, talking to someone from the beginning, seeing when they're hurt and then them maybe getting better or maybe not in some instances, but at least helping them in some way in their life. Um, that's what makes it so important to me. Now, you came to Montlake um, after spending some time as a prosecutor, right? You went to UGA, you did Tulane Law, and then you delved into a different aspect of the legal field. I did start briefly um, as an intern at a prosecutor's office. It just wasn't for me. I have now been at Montlake for almost eight years, so it's been a while. Um, but, you know, I just didn't feel that I was in the right field if I was uh, and I have mad respect for public defenders and prosecutors out there, but it just was not for me. How did you know personal injury was for you, Michael? Well, I mean, I think it's the easiest way to help the most amount of people. Um, you know, uh, one of the things that struck me um, coming into this field was the amount of people that actually don't know they can get legal help. So there are so many people that are out there that are involved in a situation which may cause a lot of harm, minimal harm, and they don't realize that there's recourse out there for them, something that they can do to help them in this situation legally. And by providing the services that we do when people call us, they are informed in ways that they you know, would never be else in, in any other situation. So, Not all heroes wear capes. <laughs> that's... That's true. And I think that's what really I know with the halo, you know, sitting next to me. But uh, we the halo uh, and the cape. We uh, you know, it's all about because we we talk to so many people and I mean, we don't take we can't possibly take all of the cases that call. 
but yet it's still rewarding to help someone or lead them in the right direction that they never would have known prior. Yeah, I think I uh, the last number I heard was that Motlick actually has typically does hundreds of thousands of free consultations because you guys are answering the phones when folks call. And as you said, not every case is a case That's here. Right. So um, good to know that sort of path that led you both here to Thank sit you. in the chairs next to me. I am so happy to have you back with me. We're talking about dog ownership today on Lawyers in the House. Uh, first off, are you guys dog owners? I haven't had a dog in years. Um, my mom has several, however. <laughs> <laughs> her favorite is Rosie Mae. I'm sure Rosie Mae is on her <laughs> lap right now. Hey, Rosie Mae. Um, do you guys, are you dog dog people? Uh, yes, absolutely. I am a dog lover. I was never allowed to have a dog growing up. And now me and all of my siblings, we all have dogs. I have two <laughs> Chihuahua mix, rescue, whatever. You know, never thought I'd be a small dog person, Stan and Ted. But um, they are they're chihuahuas, so they're a little crazy, but I love them. <laughs> um, who's your soulmate, your husband or your, your dog? <laughs> you know, I think it's maybe a little debatable, but at the end of the day, it's it's Stan. I can't say that. And Stan's, Stan's my dog, not my husband. So <laughs> he's my soulmate. What can I say? All That's right. So funny. what about you, uh, Mr. Rubin? I've had dogs my entire life. Yeah? Um, and I have. we have two right now, Sadie and Lucy, and they are both golden doodles. One is maybe 70 pounds, and the other one is about 40, and they are my therapy. Your therapy. Oh, I love them. Dogs are amazing. Dogs are amazing. They are, you know, they give us the unconditional love. We see ourselves oh, in yeah. them, I think, on, a, on our best days. Um, it's not always, as we said, sunshine and light, though. So um, the good things we've heard about dog ownership from you guys, that they can be your soulmates and that they can be your therapy. But what happens when um, something bad happens with a dog? Let's talk about dog bites. That's I think that's the first thing that everybody thinks of, sure. right? Yeah, dog bites are, I mean, it happens all the time. Dogs, I mean, it can just happen with a friend coming over to visit and the Ooh. dog is in the backyard and they come in and the dog runs up and bites them because they, the dog perceives something differently, um, a threat or is just playful even, but actually can bite somebody. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, it can happen in, in any way. It can happen at your home. It can happen at somebody else's home. It can happen just in a dog park walking down the street. These bites, I mean, dogs, as much as I absolutely <laughs> adore my dogs, they are animals. Um, you know, the communication that we have with them is a little different than we have, um, like right here sitting and being They love baby to... talk. Yes, yes. And thank God that dogs can't talk, actually, because they'd have a lot to say, probably. Um, <laughs> if these dogs could talk. Forget the walls. If right, these dogs could right. talk. I mean, so, I communicate with my dogs telepathically. Don't telepathically. Of course. They can sense our moods, right? So, you know, to your point, Sarah, you said that at least one of your dogs, I don't know if it's Stan, your soulmate, who's a little crazy. So you've got a lot to think about about if you've got guests coming over. Absolutely. I'm anytime I have a new situation, my dogs are put in a safe place. Uh, I know that they would prefer to be around me, but they have to be sometimes put in a safe place because uh, I don't know sometimes how they're going to react because they're chihuahuas. And I don't think chihuahuas can necessarily, I, I'm not going to say never, but I don't think that my dogs can be trained um, as <laughs> crazy chihuahuas, but they're very sweet dogs. Um, they're, 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 they're so kind, but I, I don't know sometimes how they're going to respond to a toddler running around. Um, so I always make sure that they're in a safe spot. I don't, you know, leave them in my backyard unattended and, um, keeping them safe makes me feel better because I know that, um, they're not, they're, they're not going to be put in a position that would harm anyone else and they're safe. I think depending on the stats you see, um, more dog victims are children, um, rather than adults, depending on what stats you're looking at. So I'm, I'm thinking this is a good opportunity for you, Michael and Sarah, to talk to dog owners about what they need to know. Sure. What's well, the overarching thing that you think is like first out of the gate, first out of the dog pen? Well, I mean, first out of the, if you love your dog, you want to protect your dog. And by protecting your dog, you're protecting everybody else. It's just, it's sort of a circle. So what um, does protecting our dog look like? Well, protecting your dog looks like when somebody, I mean, as Sarah had mentioned, if somebody were to come to your home, um, it's pretty easy to put a dog into a room. They may not like it, but until you find out whether or not they're actually 
you know, safe around the person. That's one way to, to, to get into that. But the other thing is just knowing your dog and being and just taking the proper precautions is just almost like common sense. Um, if you have someone, if you know your dog barks at everybody that comes up the walkway, maybe if that someone comes in, they're going to do something to them. But what about not in the house, you guys? Sure. Michael, Sarah, I mean, you know, we're dogs don't spend most, of, well, maybe they do spend their, most of their times in the house, but they're, we're out walking our dogs a lot. Dog parks, uh, you know, we're sidewalks. We have a little dog park in our subdivision. I'm constantly, you know, when I'm out there seeing dogs, what's, um, there have got to be other things that we can remind people about. Most municipalities have leash laws, so it's really important to keep your dog on a leash. Now, if you are in a, a dog park, um, it's more of an as- assumption of the risk, you know. So if you're in a dog park and let's say you bring a dog that you know to be vicious around other dogs, you shouldn't be doing that. Don't bring your dog if your dog um, if your dog has a propensity to bite other dogs or people to a dog park. You want to protect your dog. Your dogs are your family. I treat my dogs as members of my family. I know that they're not human, but um, they're still members of my family. So I'm always looking out to keep them safe. And if that means, you know, if I have uh, someone in my home repairing something, you know, whether it's a painter or you have someone just coming in, uh, a plumber, you want to make sure that your dogs are are not going to be put in a position where if they approach that person, um, that they could get injured by that person or that they could injure the, the person in your home. So I'm always looking out for a way to keep my dog safe. Not all dog injuries or dog cases, personal injury cases involving dogs, have to do with a bite, right? We, sure. we can, I guess we can get into that. What were you going to say, though? Well, just, uh, just I mean, that the, the dogs and everything that, you know, just taking ownership and responsibility of your dog is important. And the thing is, is it gets back to my first point. If something does happen, your dog, I mean, could be in jeopardy. Like some the... Uh, uh, um, SPCA would come or the um, animal control and potentially you could lose your dog over just a simple something that could have been simply avoided. If I, if if my dog does bite somebody, am I on the hook? I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's a hard thing. To Context answer. is everything. Yeah. You have to know a little bit more. Yeah. But I mean, if your dog bites someone and you didn't have your dog on a leash, in that situation, then yeah, you could be on the hook for that. And that's a simple situation to to fix. If you leave your dog outside unattended in the front of your yard um, without a leash and you have delivery people coming in and it bites a delivery person, yes, you can be on the hook for that. Absolutely. It's interesting because um, I know that we've gotten those texts from the utility folks. Like when you're, (laughs) you know, if you're going to have a dog in the house, make sure you put it away. Um, But I also think that there is something that we need to talk about with maybe certain types of dogs who get like a bad rap don't you think that that's um i think that's i think that's unfortunately um something that i see breed discrimination and we're going to get into that next on lawyers in the house with motlick and michael rubin and sarah neeland you're on wsb stay with us Welcome back to Lawyers in the House with Motlick on WSB. I'm your host, Veronica Waters, here with Sarah Neeland and Michael Rubin. And we're talking about dog ownership and some of the scary moments that can come with it, whether you are an owner or somebody who runs across an aggressive dog at some point. This is a show with information that you're going to want to know. Got to remind everybody, if you missed the first half of the show, there is some really good information. So check us out on podcasts locations like Spotify and Apple Podcasts, wherever you get the hottest podcasts, Lawyers in the House is there. You can also make sure you check us out on lawyersinthehouse.com and uh, see our pretty faces. When we left off, I was talking about how irritated I am that dogs that I have owned, like pit bulls or rottweilers, um, are sort of given this bad rap. You know, they have this aggression because they've um, often been bred to fight. So they're, they're, you know, their genes are strong and they're powerful pets. And while Stan and Sadie would do anything, you know, to hurt somebody who tried to hurt one of you guys, they're still they don't get the same kind of rap. You know, it's right. just like these dogs are big and powerful. Right. And what's up with the breed discrimination? Is there anything that people can do? Because I can't I know that there are some places that maybe won't rent to you or insure you. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, sadly, discrimination is everywhere in our life and it doesn't stop with dogs and uh, 
like you said, the pit bulls, the Rottweilers. When I was younger, it used to be Doberman Pinscher. Oh, we used to have a Doberman too, Admiral. Yeah. Well, Magnum <laughs> PI had the Dobermans on there, so I, I, I love those dogs. Um, but yes, everybody you know, has these predispositions about thinking, well, this dog is going to be violent. But the truth is, is that Sarah's Chihuahua can do damage too. Um, and that's not bred to, to fight. Whereas a dog that's bred to fight, if the owners are caring and take care of the dog and provide it love and nurture it, it's pro. I mean, I can't speak for certain, but it's probably going to be less likely. That's to right, and act that's out. most. That's most dog owners, and it's just because they're like big dogs, right? Right, that they get a bad rap, Sarah. Yeah, they do. They do definitely get a bad rep, and um, it's so important to make sure if you are if you have one of these aggressive type breeds. Um, and I understand. I have met many of these aggressive type breeds that I absolutely adore and have showed no no aggression to me. But if you have one of these aggressive breeds, make sure you're telling your landlord, make sure you're telling your homeowner's insurance so that they can write it into your policy. Because a lot of times if something happens and you have one of these dogs in your home and whatever happens involves your dog, it could be excluded from the policy. So it's really important to make sure you are communicating with your insurance carriers. Can you tell me about a case that sort of stuck with you over the years? Absolutely. My client was a realtor and she was delivering some papers. You know, this was when things were actually printed. (laughs) And she was delivering some papers with new homes, things like that to her clients and or prospective clients. She was Entering the home, just going on the driveway, walking on the driveway, when a big dog that she had never met before completely mauled her. And it really did some damage. She had exposed bone. There was a child in the home who came outside and finally called the dog that eventually got the dog off of her. But she had to have surgery. I mean, it was a really traumatic thing that left her with a huge scar on her arm. And it was absolutely awful. So... This situation could have easily been prevented if this big dog was not kept off leash in the front of the house. I mean, anyone can can enter your property to deliver something, whether it's DoorDash or even if it's just a kid whose ball rolled onto your property and they want to go retrieve that ball. This could have easily been prevented. So what did the owners of the dog do in this case? Did they was it really tough? to to do this one. This was really tough because it turned out that this specific dog had bitten other people before. If and this was a long time ago, but if I'm remembering correctly, it had bitten delivery um, guys before. And so this dog was taken by animal control for the, I believe it's a 10 day quarantine. And at that point, um, the the city, county, state, whoever it was, had to decide what to do with the dog. And unfortunately, in this specific case, that dog had to be put down. Someone's childhood pet had to be put down because the owner was not um, responsible in taking care of their their family member. To me, dogs are family members. It's heartbreaking. I remember seeing on Instagram um, the other day somebody was talking about um, them having to defend their dog in court because somebody was trespassing on their property and um, the dog had bitten them. And that's got to be a tough thing, too. Can a, like, can a criminal or a trespasser say, your dog bit me? Is, do, do I have to have a sign out for that, first of all? <laughs> I, don't th- I, <laughs> I do not think that you need a sign if a burglar is coming on <laughs> in your dog. I think that's why some people have dogs. Um, to alert them of trespassers or things, which is fine. The dog, I mean, they could be totally friendly dogs. They just alert um, and bark when someone's on the property. But no, if someone is um, illegally on your premises, I, I don't think you would have to worry. I would commend the dog that help, that saves you. You know what, not to get too grim, but I remember um, a case here in Metro Atlanta where a, an apparent, where a homeowner came home and found an apparent home invader um, outside the house who had been in the house but had been attacked by the homeowner's dogs. And that crook, that a, that a presumed criminal, mm, yeah. did not survive. Um, Sarah, you said something that really makes me curious. You talked about the dog had bitten somebody before in that case. I've heard of something called the one-bite rule. What is that? Is it the one-bite rule or one-bite law? Is that like a get-out-of-jail-free <laughs> pass for a dog? Like you get, you get one bite free? What's up with that? It's it's sort of um, it's sort of old law. It used to be, you know, Fido gets one free bite. And then after that, maybe he's determined to be not such a nice dog. Maybe he's vicious now. But in in the way things are now, there are so many 
code sections that are in place for uh, cities, counties, states to make sure that your dog's on a leash. So the one bite rule isn't really as effective as a legal argument. Um, Michael, do you want to add anything to this? Well, I mean, I just think it really comes down to did you properly protect people around your dog? Um, if you know your dog's vicious or if there's a chance, I mean, uh, like Sarah mentioned, the leash laws and things like that. But if your dog is out in the public, let's say, um, you know, you don't want to walk too close to three kids walking by if you know there's a chance. So you cross the street, walk on, just take precautions and just be safe because, uh, and again, you never know what the, how the other person is going to react to your dog coming at them. Maybe they kick your dog. Maybe they hurt your dog and your dog wasn't even going to attack them, right? Like they were coming to lick the person, but they're threatened. They don't like dogs. They feel scared and they kick your dog and your dog's injured now for no reason at all. Literally had um, a few months ago in our subdivision, a dog um, got shot at. Uh, Thankfully, I guess the guy was a terrible shot, but he (laughs) was apparently afraid of dogs, but he was packing and he shot at a dog that was running in our little er dog park area. Just out of nowhere, the dog had nothing to do with him, and it was it's so shocking that that could happen. Um, we, we should talk, too, about the fact that not all dog injuries, or I should say not all personal injury cases involving dogs, actually involve bites. But we were talking about stuff that happens outside the house. Michael, you had a major case that mm-hmm. was inside. Yeah, I did, and she was a very sweet woman. She was going, going over to her neighbor's house. And sat on her couch, and the next thing you know, a small dog jumps up and bites her in the face, Um, right? Like, I think it was the lip area, and, I mean, caused significant harm to her. And this dog, uh, you know, she didn't know this was going to happen, but the it had had a propensity to be that way, the owner, we found out later. Mm. But she ended up needing plastic surgery, and when you have a dog bite, they're... It's a unique type of injury just because of the infections that can occur and how they treat them. They're not treated the same way as if you cut yourself with a pen or a piece of, you know, a paper cut or something, let's say, where you could put neosporin on it and or stitch it if you cut yourself with a nail. They can't do that because it may get infected, and then if it's closed, that infection can get into your bloodstream very quickly. Yikes. So they have to treat these injuries in a very specific way. So it's obviously just a... Out, it's very important you seek medical attention um, if you are bitten by a dog, only because of the fear of getting um, an infection or something. Just make sure you're okay. On that note, was the dog vaccinated? Rabies. And I know we're going to probably get yeah, into that. Yeah, vaccinations before, are so but, important. You got to get your dog their shots. Right. But, are we required to report? We're not. I think in Georgia, we're actually not required to report to the authorities a dog bite, but we but we should. We're encouraged to. But I know some health departments will try to keep track of that yeah. to see whether or not there's a danger of rabies or something. I sure. don't think it's I don't think it's the law here in Georgia, though. But we should if it happens. All right. Back to what I was saying earlier. Michael, Sarah, not every case involves a bite when a dog's involved. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. It, I mean, it's uh, they someone could be knocked over. Um, some, I mean, there's someone just someone could be running away from a dog. That's right. And then they fall. Running away. You yeah. ever had a case? Either one of you ever had a case like that? Uh, I have. I, yeah. I haven't had a case specifically like that. No, I mean, I had a. I mean, I remember it clearly because um, I, I met with him a couple the the victim a couple of times. He was just simply in his own backyard, and the neighbor's dog got loose um, off of a chain. Oh wow! And came over, and he was petrified of this animal. So he started running, and as he ran away, much like Sarah was saying, he fell and had a severe fracture of his ankle. So now he's running away. He's got this severe fracture. Then the dog comes up to him and starts attacking him also while he's got this broken ankle. My God, so, that is terrifying. And this is in his own yard. In his own yard. Yeah, he's, I, doing, he's probably doing everything right. You know, no, he's not right. antagonizing a dog. No. The dog gets loose. No, and he is forever forever now injured because not only do most dog bites leave a scar, but when you have a fractured ankle that requires hardware, uh, that's going to be in there forever. And this is all, this is simply from someone in their own backyard minding their own business. And that's and again, that gets back to the owner of that dog and protecting because much like the sad story with Sarah, Sarah's case, the dog gets put down. And that's somebody's pet, somebody's family member. And... 
just check the chain, check things, make sure, you know, that everything is okay because otherwise your neighbor could be hurt. And if you're like your neighbor, that's certainly not something you want to have happen. We've got to be responsible to, I love how you said, we got to look out for our pets. We don't want to lose our pets. So we need to do everything right. The, the truth of the matter, though, is we love our dogs even if we know them to be aggressive, yeah. right? If Even if we know that they – okay, Michael, do you remember this past summer we had heard about this postal worker yeah. who was mauled by five dogs in Florida? Yeah, She a, wasn't doing anything. She was in her truck. The truck had broken down, and what did the dogs do? It's one of the scariest. They got out of the, they got out of the fence, and neighbors said they had done it before. Yeah. What's – am I not responsible – to be doing something different there if I'm the owner of five big dogs that sure. neighbors have been complaining about for ages. I mean, I think that's obvious in the sense that if you own um, or are parents of some animal that can cause harm, you should protect the people around you. You got to do better. Yeah. I mean, you got to make sure if your dogs have gotten out of the fence before, you got to find out what's wrong with the fence, build a better fence. Uh, make sure you're taking care of your dogs and not leaving them unattended in your yard, because if they're unattended and they get through and and and, and they, they could do anything. I mean, they could attack anyone if they're not friendly or if they're scared. There's a lot of reasons for that. So people just have to do better. Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, if I am the victim of an attack, isn't it important for me to document everything I know? about yeah. that incident, how where the dogs came from, what I looked like afterwards. I mean, yeah, but I think the most important thing, I mean, not to take away from that is the vaccinations of the dog. Find mm, out if the dog okay. is vaccinated. So, I mean, if you know who the owners of the dog are, you want to find out immediately. Can you show me the vaccination papers? Can you get them to me, your vet? Because the vet would have them um, if you've taken your dog to the vet to get them. So, I mean, that's the first thing, because otherwise you have to go through a series of rabies shots. And those are very painful. So there's a lot of things that can happen if the dogs aren't properly vaccinated right off the bat. So I think that's, you know, I mean, seek medical attention, obviously, first. Mm -hmm. But then after that, find out if the dog is vaccinated so the doctors can know what type of course to treat you with. Right, right. Um, And then, you know, everything from that point after that. Yes, take pictures. I mean, because you're going to have some scarring, but call the police. Yeah, pictures. animal control. Exactly. Call animal control. Yeah, yeah, call animal control. Yeah. Do you do you have to um, have the dog put down every time this happens? Absolutely not. Okay. And I think in my situation, I say my situation, the, my client's case, I think this was a, a dog that had done harm in the past, so that's what made this one different. So if you don't protect your dogs, again, I feel like we keep saying the same things over and over then heaven forbid, your dogs can be taken away from you. Um, So it's just so important to make sure that you're doing everything that you can to protect your children, whether they're human or have paws. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's rare. I think it's rare. I mean, in all my experience, I mean, honestly, between us, I think those are the only two I know of, the two dogs that have been put down. It's not, it doesn't happen a lot um, because most of the time people are good. And they do care. And most of the time, pets are good, too. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. So we're spending all this time talking about how bad they could be, but most of the time they're good. You yeah. just got to be prepared for the bad. You got to be prepared. And I just want everybody to know that you were talking about your case with Suzanne, and you can hear Suzanne in her own words if you go to yeah. motlick.com. And really, and she looks fantastic. The plastic surgery she got, amazing, because oh, no. I could she, never tell. She looks, She's so sweet. She, yeah, she looks like a beautiful woman and everything, yeah. you know. No, I was very all's well that ends well. It's so gratifying, and I know Sarah can attest to this. When you get to help somebody like that, and they end up—I mean, not, I don't want to say as good as they were prior, but you know, they're very satisfied. They're just happy that they had someone to help them, and it just—it's—it's it's a wonderful feeling. That's what it's all about. This is lawyers in the house. Welcome back to Lawyers in the House with Motlick Pooch fans and friends of pooches and those who maybe aren't so sure how they feel about pooches. Lots of great information in this show talking about dog ownership with Michael Rubin and Sarah Neeland. What you've been waiting for all hour is here the Motlick closing argument. Take it away. Sure. My favorite thing. So we have five closing arguments today that will hopefully help you um, if you're ever faced with a situation like this or own a dog and Um, Some of them may seem like common sense, but number one, keep your dog on a leash or fenced in. I mean, that's just just do that. And that will prevent most problems. 
I had mentioned vaccines. Please make sure your dogs are vaccinated and up on vaccines because you just never know what's going to happen. And then know your dog. You know, you're, the dog is a family member like a child. So make sure that you know what's going on with your dog. And if there's a chance that anything could happen, just make sure that you put the dog away or just protect this person coming into your house. But just think of them as a family member. If they're coming into your home, treat them like family and you wouldn't want someone in your family to be bitten. Four, don't approach a dog that you don't know. Don't go in trying to give belly rubs to a dog that you really don't know at all or stick your hand out to pet a dog if you're not familiar with that dog. And five, always ask and teach your children this. Ask before approaching any dog. This is so important because children need to know that not all dogs are friendly. And while most of them are, we don't want anything bad to happen. Make sure they call us if they need anything. Um, you can call 1-800-LAW-NEED or any of our social media and we can help them. So if something like this unfortunately does happen, at least you could have somebody to talk to with a free consultation to make sure that you're protected. I didn't ask you at any time during the hour how often you actually have dog bite cases or dog, you know, cases that involve dogs on some level. That's not as, that's not as often as obviously the, uh, a car wreck or someone injuring themselves in a store or something, but it does but happen. There's, there's frequent. Yeah. Occurrences of this more happening. than I would like to see. How yeah. about that? Yeah, I do think again, most dog owners are responsible, and the reason it's just like in my line of work when we're talking about the news, it seems bad a lot of the time. But if it's if it's bad, it is the news because typically things are supposed to go really well. Right. So I think that's something that we need to remember. Um, all dogs go to heaven, <laughs> 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 and remember to be the person your dog thinks you are. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Michael Rubin, Sarah Nealon, thanks so much for joining us in the house on Lawyers in the House. I am Veronica Waters. See you next time.